the stazione Santa Lucia is like a gleaming syringe connected to the industrial mainland by its long trailing railway line and inserted into the rear end of Venice's Grand Canal, into which it pumps steady infusions of fresh provender and daily draws off the waste. As such, well, perhaps it's constipation, that hazard of long journeys that has provoked this metaphor, or just something in the air, but its irreverence brings a thin, twisted smile to his chapped lips. It is that tender spot where the ubiquitous technotronic circuit of the world metropolis physically impinges upon the last outpost of the self-enclosed Renaissance herbs, as a face might impinge upon a nose, a kind of itchy boundary between everywhere and somewhere, between simultaneity and history, process and stasis, geometry and optics, extension and unity, velocity and object between product and art. One is ejected through its glass doors as through the famous looking glass into a vast, empty, but strangely vibrant space, little more than a hollow echo of the magnificent piazza at the other end of the canal, to be sure, severe, still in its cool geometry, transposed from the other world and stripped of all fantastic ornament, but its edges lapped at by the city's peculiar magic are already blurred and mysterious, its lights hazed by a kind of furtive narcissism, its very air corrupted by the pungent odor of the non-functional. The corpulent Stauci, with its dingy, overworked facade, is inarguably little more than a morose, impertinent shadow of its luminous counterpart at St. Mark's, the latter held by some authorities to be the central building in the world, and who is he in search here of such an anchor to dispute that? No, no, he accepts everything, everything. And across the Grand Canal, instead of the placid grace and power of the Saluti at the other end, there is here only misshapen little San Simeon people with its outsized portico and squeezed dome. But even these poor creatures are monuments to locus, place markers, far removed from the current architectural glorification airports, superhighways, and spaceflight, and thus a part of the immense integral self that is this enchanted city, after all. The Scouts' Baroque facade, a kind of carnival mask, both revealing and deceptive, the popping green bubble on San Simeon the Dwarf, rising through the fog with the erotic suggestion of a Venetian this is a, a, an opening paragraph from the second chapter of Pinocchio in Pinocchio and Venice. I'm going to speak a little bit 